Today I'm going to show you how to create this really cool Spotify glass player effect that reacts to the waveform of a song using After Effects. It's all rigged with simple expressions, so it'll be really easy to swap the background, the text, the colors, the cover pictures, and all the rest. So if you're ready to learn some cool After Effects techniques, then grab your snacks, get comfortable, and let's get cracking. What's up everyone, welcome back to another creative editing tutorial. My name is Francois and thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful day. So today, before we jump into reconstructing this After Effects project, let me show you exactly what we'll be creating, what we're dealing with and how it all works. So as you can see here, I've got two types of layers in my composition, the ones that are marked in orange and the ones that are marked in brown. That's just my personal preference as I like to keep things visually tight and easy to navigate. But really what this means is that all the brown layers are shy layers, which means that I can hide them by clicking this little button here. And all the orange layers are the ones that we can play around with to change the colors, change the picture, change the song and the video, whatever you want. So basically what's happening is I've got a video in the background with a rectangular card blurring everything behind it. And I've made this really cool Spotify-like player with an audio waveform that actually reacts to the song that's playing. And that's really cool. Now I'd like to mention that I will be making this very same After Effects project file available on my digital store and downloadable for my tier two subscribers over on Patreon. So if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial and easily learn how to make this your own and create these awesome looking posts for yourself, then check out the first link in the description below. You get all these amazing different designs, all for barely the price of a coffee. So if you could please go ahead and grab those, that would mean the world to me, I really appreciate it. And now let's get back into the tutorial. First of all, we're going to create a new composition. I've made mine a normal 4x5 ratio for Instagram, but feel free to also make this 1080 by 1920 if you want to make this for your stories or for your TikToks. Now let's import the background video and the song that I want this player to react to. I'm just going to put these in place, pre-compose the two layers and leave them for now. Now add a shape layer and both a rectangle and a fill. I've made the rectangle the same aspect ratio as the overall composition, so for that just unlock the scale proportions, make it whatever ratio you want, then lock the proportions again and adjust the size to however you want it. Now that the rectangle is in place, let's change the fill color to white, add some nice rounded corners here and duplicate it. For now I'm going to rename the first one matte and rename the second one white rectangle and mute it as we'll get to that later. Now add an adjustment layer, let's call that glass effect. This is the layer that will control how blurry and rough the card is. The problem is if I add a fast box blur and dial anything in, it will affect all the composition and all the background video with it. And we just want the effects to be applied within the boundaries of the rectangle we just created. So in order to restrain the adjustment layer to only affect what's under the rectangle shape layer, I'm going to place the adjustment layer underneath the shape layer, make sure our transfer color panel is toggled on and set the adjustments layer track mode to alpha matte. And that's now telling the adjustment layer to only affect what's within the rectangle's alpha channel. Now the cool thing is, if we change our mind on the size or shape of the rectangle, we can go back to its settings and it will automatically update everything. And this automatically update trend you're seeing is something that I really love when making After Effects designs. I like being able to work with procedural layers, so you'll see more of that good stuff here in this tutorial. And make sure you stick around until the end to learn how one layer will allow you to control all of the other layers using very simple expression that even I can set up. <laughs> So now, in order to give it that frosted look to it, we're going to apply a fractal noise. Don't worry, it's very easy. First, let's create a new solid and apply the effect called fractal noise. Now, don't worry if all of these do not mean anything to you because you'll be able to copy these settings I've got right here if you purchase the After Effects template from my website or my Patreon. Links to that in the description below. But basically, the way I've set this up is to create these tiny black and white values that will roughly look like the bumps on frosted glass. If you want to get this right, make sure you have a reference picture to help you get as close to the real thing as possible. Now, I don't like how contrasted this is, is going to make the car look way too rough, so I'm just going to add a brightness and contrast effect and bring the contrast all the way down. I'm also going to duplicate that effect, but mute it for now, as the level of roughness that you need will depend on the background, video or picture. So I'll rename that one optional, this way we have it ready in case we need it. Since we don't actually need that fractal noise layer for anything other than referencing it, I'm going to mute it and put it under everything else. Now in the glass effects layer, I'm going to add a texturize effect, change the texture layer to the fractal noise one and make sure that the source is set to effects and mask. Now this is looking way too strong, so I'm going to drop down the texture contrast all the way down to 0.03, which is nothing. But I don't want the glass texture to make the card look ugly, so you do what you gotta do. Okay, so this is starting to get there. Now let's bring back the second shape layer, put it on top of the other one, and turn down its opacity to 6%. And just like that, our card's background is set up. If you play that back, you can see that everything else underneath our card gets nicely blurred and refracted. 
Now I'm just adding two text layers, the player icon and the Spotify logo to the composition. Don't worry about trolling through the internet, avoiding dodgy websites just to find icons that are called PNGs but don't actually have any transparent background because Uncle Francois has got your back. These exact same icons and logos as well as the fonts will be available in the templates which you can go ahead and download by clicking the first link in the description below. Okay, so for now we've got the overall structure, but first of all the colors are all over the place, and secondly we're missing the actual audio waveform. You could manually change all the colors now, it's perfectly fine, but in just a moment I'll show you how to change and control the colors for all these layers with only one layer to rule them all. But first let's recreate that really cool audio waveform effect and see how to animate it to react to the beat of the song. Let's create a new solid, call it waveform and add an effect called audio waveform. Change the beginning and end points to make the whole waveform within that space here next to the Spotify logo. Just make sure that this line is nice and horizontal. Let's not worry about the colors for now, we'll deal with that in the next step. But for now let's change the audio layer to the background one, that's the one we added in the beginning of the tutorial. If you're not certain you've already done it, go ahead and make sure that you've enabled the audio playback in the background comp by toggling this little icon on. Now when the song plays, we want it to look like these cool Spotify barcodes, so let's decrease the displayed samples and maximum height to somewhere around these. Also, very important, change the display option here to digital, not analog. And now you get these really cool bars going up and down following the beats of the song and looking awesome. Okay, we're getting there. Now let's add a cork of a picture in that empty space here. Just bringing whatever picture or video you want and put it in place. The thing though is that I want this to look like a nice UI design, so I'd like to make this a square with round corners. For that I'm going to duplicate the white rectangle shape layer, change its aspect ratio to be 1 by 1, so basically just make sure that the X and Y values are the same, and let's place the layer on top of the cover picture and make sure that it covers it entirely. Now once again let's set the track mode of the cover picture to alpha matte, and bosh, your corners are round. And now let's put the finishing touches to all this. I've added a slight drop shadow coming from the top on all the text layers, the icons, the audio waveform and the cover picture. Now let's finally create that one layer that will allow us to change all the settings that matter to us. Let's add a null layer. This will basically leave in our composition but won't affect anything underneath. I'm going to call this controls here. Now let's go over to the effects and presets tab and let me show you the expressions control tab. Let's add this color control effect to our null object and just for the sake of this example, let's set it to this slight desaturated brown color. Obviously, just as expected, it hasn't changed anything since it's a null object. Now what we're going to do is tell After Effects that we want the colors of all the other layers to be whatever that color picker says. Let's start with the first text layer. I'm going to add a fill to it. Also, let's toggle open this color control effect. Now in the fill effect that's on the text layer, you're going to hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and click on the stopwatch icon. This will bring up your expressions panel. Don't panic, we're not actually going to type in any crazy formula here. Simply click on the pick whip icon here and drag it all the way up to the color control effect we've applied to a null object. Let's go once it's selected and press enter on your numpads to confirm, or simply click away. Now you can see that the color of a text has changed to match the color that we picked earlier. And now just to show you how this works, we can change the color again and the text's color will update itself automatically. I told you, everything in this tutorial is procedural and updates automatically. Now let's repeat this process for all the other text layers and icons. The only one I'm leaving as is, is the heart icon. This is staying red. So on the second text layer, let's add a fill effect, hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and click the stopwatch icon to bring up your expressions. Now click on the pick whip icon and drag it over to the color control effect. Or you can actually copy this effect and paste it onto the other layers. The expressions will remain as they are, set to follow our color control effect. Now watch this really cool thing happen. Back in the null object, I'm going to change the color here to whatever I want, and boom, all the layers have changed to the same color. This is flipping awesome. Now if I wanted to make this even more awesome, I've added a new adjustment layer on top of everything and added a very light glow effect to it. And I've set the opacity of this layer to be controlled by a slider control on the null object. So for that, add that slider control to the null object, then select the adjustment layer and press T on your keyboard to bring up the opacity. Hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and click on the stopwatch icon. Click on the pick whip and drag it to the slider control. Now watch what happens when you slide this left and right. Oh, and I'm not stopping here. I've also rigged the blur amount of the big rectangle layer to follow a new slider on the null object. Watch this. And I've rigged the opacity of the white rectangle layer to follow another new slider on the null object. I am unstoppable. I don't make expressions, I am expressions. Now once again, if this is all new to you and you don't know how it all works, 
or if you want these templates to see the settings of Darden in order to get this look, feel free to check out the first links in the description below where you can get your hands on these awesome looking Spotify glass player templates for literally less than the price of the coffee you had this morning. I'd really appreciate you checking these out as it really helps support the channel and helps me carry on making more and more awesome creative editing tutorials just like this one. But with that said, that's it for today. This is how to create this amazing Spotify glass player that moves with the bits of the song using After Effects. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something cool. If you did and you did my accent, you can like this video as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Also, feel free to get subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future creative editing tutorial every single week on this channel. Finally, if you're wondering what to watch next, you should watch this video right here. Thanks again for watching. My name is Francois. See you next week for another video.